Good morning, everybody. How you doing? I am Oliver Joyce, and welcome to Ask Me Anything 7. 7 already. It's been quite a while since I did the last one, so I'm looking forward to getting into it. We'll probably go for about an hour or so as I drop some swords and sandals, wisdom and knowledge, um, a bit of insights into the game and the lore behind it, the dev process, whatever it is. I'm not really sure what's in the comments today. We have 63 comments to get through. Some of them are multi-part, so I'll do my best to get through most of them. We'll probably run for about an hour. So get yourself a delicious instant coffee or something better if you have the means. And join me for Ask Me Anything number seven. So thanks to the magic of technology, we're trying something a little new today. Uh, a lot of people have asked if I could print the questions up on the screen, and that's way too much work. Um, but I have a, a split screen thing going on. I use a software called um, OBS from Streamlabs, and it's a free piece of streaming software. Um, pretty good. Check it out if you ever want to do a bit of um, web streaming of your own, you know, or do YouTube videos. It's quite handy, you know. All right. Um, we're sorting by top comments on the channel. And uh, the question comes from Oscarus4250, Oscar Sampson, who asks, how many completely new characters and or iconic gladiators are we going to see in Sword and Sandal 6? And as usual, as with so many of the questions on the channel, I don't know, um, a number. I'll tell you, a number, yeah, it's really helpful. At least in the Battle Caravan... Uh, there is only one returning character from a previous series, the Battle Caravan being the shops. So you've already got uh, five new characters as part of that. Um, and most of the arena champions you see in the game will be new. There will be a couple of um, surprises returning old favorites and so on. But uh, as with everything, we want the world to move forward. And time has moved forward. It's been about 20 years. I can't remember exactly... Uh, in game time since Swords and Sandals 5 happened. And although this is a direct sequel to Swords and Sandals 3, um, a lot of time have, has passed. And so we will be seeing a lot more new gladiators in the arena. That's the exact number I couldn't tell you. If every question is going to be so long, or every answer is going to be so long, it could be for a while. Sean Jacob Parmages asks, um, if the instruments are coming back, here's a boss idea. So kind of look like a stereotypical death metal rock star with kiss face paint like the band. Messy hair, leather jackets and pants filled to the brim with spikes and his weapons could be some kind of death metal kind of guitar. Thanks for reading. Yeah, that's cool. I want to have a few um, heavy metal style bosses in the game. Uh, you may indeed find sort of leather jacket type armor and weapons that will be unique to certain bosses. Each boss will have at least one unique, uh, at least headpiece or armor set you know ranging from just one helmet up to a complete armor set and weapon just depending on how special that boss is you know the end boss of the whole thing will have a completely unique armor set whereas because there's quite a lot of bosses in the game you might find most of them are just wearing you know uh, armor that you is freely available but it might have like the kiss makeup or something like that so the the heavy metal idea is cool and because sonic weapons play a part in sword and sound of six guitars and that kind of thing it's a good idea Mary Moore Reacts asks, My question is, what would you do and how would you react if the Sword and Sandals games became the new trend among, after Among Us and Minecraft and Fortnite's trends run out? Um, firstly, I don't really think those trends are ever, ever going to run out, it feels like. Minecraft's been around for a decade and you know, still going strong. Fortnite is making billions. Among Us, I can see slowing down. Like you know, Those things always have uh, you know, tales that slow down. Look, if I could get even a fraction of that success, even like 0.1% of that success, I would be thrilled. And what would I do and how would I react? Um, I'll, yeah, I'd be, I'd be thrilled because basically my life would be set financially, creatively and everything. What I'd probably do, to be honest, is I'd probably step back a little from programming and do a little bit more world building, building and design of the world. I'd like to hire proper programmers along with, you know, get a full-time artist and expand things a bit. If I was really making that kind of money to, you know, drop a, a really high, not triple A quality sword and sandals game, but at least double A, um, you know, I'd just like to, I'm not a very great programmer, to be honest. And you know that, you guys know that. There's so many bugs in sword and sandals, but I would also, you know, I'd, I'd love to take care of my family and extended family a bit. Um, 
through the money that something like that could make. But if, yeah, in short, if Sword and Sandals became as big as something like, let's just forget about Minecraft and Fortnite because that's never going to happen. But if it had the success of an Among Us or something, I would ideally, I'd probably keep working on Swords and Sandals forever in some capacity. But I'd like to try making a couple other games outside of the of the series, and you know, without the um, the constraint, the financial constraint that um, trying to make a game like that comes with. Straken twenty four asks, "How are you doing? How are you, the wife and the child? I hope all is well." Hey, thanks, Straken. How are you doing? Um, how are you handling? Uh, the COVID years, it seems like many of us are coming through it. I know um, people in India and other countries are really battling with lots of cases and so on, but certainly in America and through Europe, um, a lot of um, the vaccinations are coming through, and so it feels like we're getting out of that. Australia, in our infinite wisdom with our full government, we handled the uh, pandemic really well in terms of... Um, keeping the case numbers down and everything because our state governments are great but our federal government are a bunch of fools and we've bollocked up the vaccination so we're slow to roll out vaccinations and we may not get there until the end of the year because uh, we've got a, a potato in charge of our country <laughs> i don't know where i went with that political rant sorry guys how am i doing i'm i'm well my friend um i got this cold which i've had basically for two months that uh, my baby boy charlie and Isaac, my oldest one, seemed to have had, and it just lingered throughout the whole family. Overall, though, um, yeah, I can't complain. I mean, lack of sleep and everything, but I'm pretty blessed to be in this position with a lovely family and, you know, making games for good people like yourself. Thanks for asking. I appreciate it. <laughs> Highly professional. <laughs> you, yeah, 5,000 subs later, still fooling around doing stupid things. What happens when I get to 10,000? Maybe I'll... I don't know. <laughs> uh, liquid modernity tastes like urine. I'll take that as a comment. No, that's actually the username. I don't have a question, he says. I'm just commenting to give you an energy motivation boost. Remember that Remembering that Sword and Sandal is amazing and has huge potential. Thank you, my friend. Funny enough, motivation has been a, a bit of a, a thing in the last couple of weeks. And mainly it's just because of lack of sleep and the energy that goes with it. Um, broken sleep can really affect your sort of, you know, your thinking in the daytime and how you approach everything. And sometimes things can feel too hard. And I kind of got a little bit stuck in Sword and Sandal 6 for the first time, just getting bogged down in the um, character shop and the inventory and that kind of stuff. And things that you usually build later, but I know is challenging and I wanted to make sure I could do it properly in Goto. But um, Goto has... So many things that are good, but many things that are a bit weird and dodgy about it. What I'm realizing, just like every game engine, uh, there are some big flaws and stuff that you got to work through. But you know, once you've picked a game engine, just keep building, keep rolling it with it. Um, but reading comments like yours has definitely given me a motivational boost. So thank you, my friend. KOTOR HD TV channel, uh, who is a longtime commenter on um, Whiskey Barrel channel, my friend. Thank you. Ask, hello, it's been a while. It has indeed. I have a question. I hope it's not been asked before, so I apologize in advance. Uh, how has the pandemic affected your work? Do you get to work on all your projects even more or not? Um, and congratulations on the latest subscriber achievement. You deserve way more. Oh, thank you. I, you know, I feel like I'm glad the game's successful. Uh, I feel like I offer such amateur content on the YouTube channel that it probably has the numbers that it deserves, but, you know. I appreciate all all and every viewer. I really want to bring about the games, Gladiator. I don't know if I keep saying it, but I'm going to start one next week. Um, I really will because I miss doing those, and I think um, they're fun to do. Your question about the pandemic affecting work. To be honest, um, like everyone, I think it's, it's affected my work to a degree. Uh, Last year, it really impacted my wife and I because we put um, Isaac in, we brought him out of daycare and he was at home for months and months and months, at least two or three months. And I would work in the morning, Christine would work in the afternoon and vice versa. And so we were kind of working half days and then we'd work late at night to try and make up for that. And so I was trying to build um, Crusader through all that and it was just a battle. Uh, this year has been a lot better, but... Still, my days are shorter. I don't feel like I'm ever doing a 40-hour week because the days probably start 
after nine and finish around four, ten past four because kids come home and I can't really work when they're at home. Um, there's just, you know, parenting is uh, very much a two-person job when they're little and I really salute any parent that's a single parent. Um, for much of my life, uh, I was raised by a single parent. My mum, uh, for my much of my young life, <laughs> I'm just an adult and, and I don't know how she did it, raised me and my sisters. So, um, yeah, to answer your question, I didn't really get to work on my projects as much as maybe I would have before the pandemic uh, because everyone was at home. On the days that people aren't at home, I feel are the most productive. Uh, the family's out right now at the zoo, which is kind of cool. So I'm getting at least a good half of the day to the work on the game, even though I'm spending an hour and a bit working on, um, on you know, doing this video. So, But yeah, I don't think the pandemic was good for anyone, really. Uh, working from home has been good for the most part but it does start to mess with your mind and you definitely uh you feel that i didn't think i would but i felt this kind of weird loneliness and um i have missed the camaraderie of being in an office you know just chatting around the water cooler going down to get a coffee like i had at my old workplace and so on so i miss that and going back to an earlier question if uh swords and sandals really did well financially i'd probably get an office you know maybe work with some people uh, I'd like to work with my mate John Stayscale from Blood and Mead, maybe even, you know, a few other people and just, you know, build something big. Dracon 9 x asks, do you plan to release Swords and Sandals 6 on multiple platforms? I don't know why I did that voice. Um, yeah, it's going to be out on PC and Mac for sure. Maybe Linux. Godo supports Linux, but we'll see and ios and android beyond that time will tell if the game is really popular we can actually hire uh, a studio to port it to switch and maybe other consoles but um one of the downfalls of goto is out of the box it doesn't support um just porting it to nintendo because it's a big mouse driven game that can be a um a bit of a you know an issue for for touch screen kind of devices probably be right I would love to bring it to Switch if it's popular enough. Um, but yeah, firstly, PC in early access, most likely towards the end of the year. I really want to get a demo out for the Steam Festival in October, which is about five uh, months away or something. It's pretty scary. Um, uh, Jason, JPEG Jason, I love your avatar. It's always cool with the spiky hair. Um, do you try and predict when Swords and Sandals 6 will come out? Ah, yeah, just like the previous question. Yeah, so October for the um, demo build and then maybe a month or so after that, early access where it will remain. Uh, and you'll probably be able to play much of the single player campaign. And we're going to test out the multiplayer from there. The final build won't be for quite some time. I'm not really realistically thinking it will be out until at least, you know, uh, March, April, yeah, at least a year from now, if not longer. I'm a bit concerned about scope creep and multiplayer is scaring the hell out of me at the moment. You know, sometimes I think I should just release this as Sword of Sandal 6 single player, then release the multiplayer using that engine, but as a separate entire game. I don't really know what I want to do yet, but I'm building it all at the moment in the same umbrella, so we'll see. Uh, where are my buffs? asks. Are you thinking about putting in a jukebox move on Sword of Sandal 6 where we can choose the music we want to hear or making possible? Uh, to choose other music from other games from the franchise. That's a really cool idea, and probably not for Sword and Sandal 6, but for the multiplayer component of it, which, you know, um, will not be the main game, game campaign, but it'd be cool to be able to choose, you know, what arena, who you're fighting, and then maybe choose a background track, track from one of the classics. That's a great idea. I might probably add that to my notes. Um, Andreas Cloud von Stroheim asks, what do you think of making this game? What inspired you to do it? Um, you mean Swords and Sandals 6? Oh, the old series? Um, uh, I'm guessing you mean the Swords and Sandals in general, but I was very much inspired by, firstly, He-Man. 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 Dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun. He-Man. Uh, you can even see... The influences in the Swords and Sandals Gladiator in this He-Man figure. Uh, certainly the Swords and Sandals 3 characters have that rippling muscles and so on. This is a sort of um, a collector's edition He-Man. My favorite cartoon um, characters really are the He-Man figures and so on. Um, there was another guy that fell down there. Uh. 
Yeah, he man, my neck has broken. Yeah, fix it. Curse you. I don't know any excuse to show those guys. Um, but but uh, also heavily inspired by um, fighting fantasy books, which were these choose your own adventure style games that had um, fighting in them. And there's one in particular called uh, Arena of Champions. No, Trial of Champions and Arena of Death, sorry. Um, go back and find those if you can find them on eBay um, or find the PDFs of them or something. You read them, you'll see heavily influences on swords and sandals in terms of just that sort of dungeon crawling um, arena stuff. Really big influence um, on the series. Andre Malakiu. My apologies if I screwed your name up. I'm sorry. I do that all the time. Uh, question, will there be multiplayer in the upcoming game? Plan is yes. I'm going to say definitively yes. Uh, whether the game is broken up into Sword and Sandals 6 and Sword and Sandals multiplayer, there will be a multiplayer component. And you will, you can hold me accountable for that because Sword and Sandals needs multiplayer. It really does. If it wants to grow beyond where it's at now, we need multiplayer. Uh, Medicare K, uh, Medicare K, sorry, asks, Tavern Quest will come back. I'd love to see this game in a new release without bugs. Keyword being without bugs there, and I agree with you because this game of all the Sword and Sandals is probably the most buggy because there's a collection of mini games. Uh, it was the hardest one to actually get working in the classic collection just because uh, the mini games are all coded differently and so on. Maybe if the game Sword and Sandals 6 did really well, maybe we could do a Tavern Quest Redux. Having said that, if I was to do that, I'd have to remake all the mini games too. So I'll probably do new mini games and so on. But you know what's interesting is I had no idea how popular Tavern Quests actually was. It's way more popular than I thought it was going to be. You know, um, I hated making it, and I had a negative um, experience out of the whole process. But coming around to it now, because seeing how much the fans like it and see how much people like playing it with their friends, I'd love to be able to make a version where you can you know import your characters and properly save them go to shops and everything, I'd love to, you know, it's on the radar now, it's all I can say, you know, maybe that'll happen, you know, if we go through Sword and Sandals enough when we make enough of these games, there will be remakes, and you'll probably even see remakes of Sword and Sandals 2 again, and, you know, a Redux of 3 and all the rest, uh, and I'd love to do Sword and Sandals, another roguelike, but, you know, you could do this forever, and while the money keeps making it viable, I will, you know, Sword and Sandal 6 doesn't do well. It you know puts a bit of a, a stopper on things. But um, Cohen Van Wing, uh, Wingard asks, uh, just purchased the eight item bundle on Steam. Thank you, my friend. I salute you. Thanks for uh, being a true champion of the cause and uh, uh, one of the great gladiators. I finally had the time and tools to make this one happen. I've been watching for a while and been following your videos. Love the work you do. Thank you. Ah, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Um, honestly, like I'm humbled, and I say this all the time, but I'm really humbled that people still remember the old series and like it enough to go back, you know, and and purchase the the collections, you know, the various forms like the the Decalogue and now the Legendarium, which has increases, you know, as all the newer games and so on in it. I I'm always, you know, a little sheepish and ashamed that the old ones have bugs in them that I can't fix, and you know that. People buy them and go, ah, oh, damn it, these games are still buggy. But I hope they're still, you know, playable enough and fun enough for you to, you know, for your memories, you know, to, you know, to still be good about them. So I appreciate the support. Ilya Gurevich, a longtime friend of Whiskey Barrel Studios, asks, how impactful will Sword and Sandals be in terms of the story compared to the rest of the games in the series? Do you have plans to set up the game for a sequel and DLC? Yeah, absolutely. This is the direct sequel story-wise to Sword and Sandals 3. Although the events of Sword and Sandals four and five, five being the you know the the attempt of the malevolence to get into Brandor via the vessel of Antares and so on, um, that story is pretty much finished. But Sword and Sandals continues uh, with the return of the automatons to Brandor a few years after that, and there is a new powerful enemy. It drives the story forward a little bit more. You get to see a bit more of the realm. You'll be visit visiting different cities. This game won't be super text heavy. I'm aware of how much translation is needed for this to go to different languages, so I have to keep the text a little bit light. But you will see a story mode in Sword and Sandals 6 that 
drives things forward and hopefully sets things up for Constellation Mirror, which will be the RPG that, you know, I want to make on top of everything else, on top of everything else. Um, this hopefully will lead into that. There will be DLC for this game, but it will probably be in the, in the form of maybe some special tournaments and certain cities that you can unlock. Maybe you go to like the City of the Dead in... Um, in um, where is Antares from? I've forgotten. Where is he from? Eldor Half, of course. Maybe an Eldor Half DLC. Maybe a Swords of Sandals 3 DLC. We get to play through that old tournament. Um, Akil Raj asks, is there any chance of getting Swords of Sandals 3 style music? I found the game to be memorable because how powerful the music was. Um, firstly, Swords of Sandals 6 will have new music altogether done by my good friend Alex Tosani. Uh, Electro, um, he's been going through a bit of a, a, a tough time at the moment, so I want to give him a bit of shout out. You're you're a good man, a good friend, and the music this guy's delivering, you're gonna love. I think people are gonna love it. So, um, a really '80s rock. Think of Eye of the Tiger. Think of John Parr's Saint Elmo, Elmo's Fire. Think of um, Stan Bush's You Got the Touch. That kind of stuff. Got kick-ass guitar solos and so on. Less of the fully heavy metal that you found in Sword and Sandals 3 because Sword and Sandals 3, that heavy metal stuff was done by an actual a thrash metal band who I don't, I'm no longer in contact with. Um, I haven't known the, 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 the main singer in that band, Gabriel Castro, I haven't seen for years, unfortunately. And I'd love him to do another track one day, but, but we're looking at more a sort of 80s futuristic synth pop rock thing that suits the sort of robotic nature of the automatons and the weapons they bring to the game. Not everyone's going to like it, but I hope you do. Um, also, will there be any chance or any magic and Western weapon cuppers? Cu Start that again. Calm down, Mr. Joyce. Calm down. Compose yourself. Also, will there be any magic and weapon customization? I like maybe adding an extra part to a weapon to make it heavier but stronger. It's a cool idea, and it's going to be in the game. You'll be able to add... Um, gems and things to weapons to uh, add buffs and things and like you said that may make the weapon heavier and stronger and that kind of thing so there'll be pros and cons to doing that but customization for sure Akil Raj also says oh I love you man love you too Akil thank you my friend I still remember the first time I found Swords and Sandals one of my old um, PC when I was an 8 year old now I'm 22 so 14 years ago and how magical the game it was for me um, thank you uh I say this all the time, but my greatest memories are nostalgic memories of games that I played when I was little too. And things like Ultima and Wonder Boy and Super Mario and Zilliard and so many to, to last, you know, to list. And so for my game to be in your collection of memories is a, a wonderful thing. And I think that is the reason Swords and Sandals has endured so long when realistically it probably shouldn't have. Sean Jacob Pamias asks, uh, is there going to be more Dragon Deer bosses like ninjas and samurai? Uh, yeah, yeah, there'll be a, a samurai kind of style boss. I think there'll be a samurai armor set, so we should have a samurai boss with um, katanas and that kind of thing for sure. Dil Sano 7 asks, have you considered Sword and Sandals Crusader with multiplayer? Thought about it. Um, Adobe Air being the, the, the battle that it is to work with, it was just impossible to do. I thought about trying to do the turn-based hot seat multiplayer early on but it was just going to drag things out so long if i ever do a proper multiplayer uh, a crusader sequel it'll probably be a bit more like um warcraft 2 or something like that and then it'd have to be multiplayer harrow asks question um you thought about making the continuation of sword and sound 3 where the gladiators are selected to fight in the galacticus fantasticus galacticus fantasticus tournament sci-fi sword and sandals will be interesting to see um infusion asks I was wondering the same thing. I mean, it says you'll fight with automatons and you've been teaming up with Bargle. Uh There may be some DLC for that if Sword and Sandal 6 does well and we'll maybe have to go back and see what happened to the um, Starbound Gladiator when he went to the Stars and fought in that tournament. Because it's sort of out of the scope of Sword and Sandal 6, um, the automatons do return and bring their futuristic weapons, but it'd be cool to have like a little DLC where you're going around in a little spaceship to planets to planets, that kind of thing. 
Um, this game has the same sort of engine to support that. So if I was going to do a DLC, the, probably the number one priority would be a Sword and Sandals 3 remake. And then probably a Sword and Sandals uh, Galacticus Fantasticus. I want to say Galacticus Fantasticus Tournament. Klesk asks, is Sword and Sandals 6 going to have the same skill tree that Sword and Sandals 3 had? Similar, yeah. It'll have your different um, different sort of uh, talent areas with, you know, the warfare, arcane, um, survival, that kind of thing, music. And the talent tree, the talents themselves will be different, but they will definitely be inspired by those. But it will look and feel a lot like that. Spoon of Desks in the Destiny asks, "Will the art style, or what will the art style for Sword and Sandals Six be like? Will it resemble Sword and Sandals Two's art style, Sword and Sandals Three's, or will it be something completely new? And if it's completely new, what sort? What sort of completely new? I'm sorry, I can't speak very well today. It's damn cold. It's making me feel like the Godfather. I want to be able to talk, but my throat is really hurting." <laughs> The art style is uh, actually in place, and I have an awesome artist um, called Alexander Terentev, a.k.a. Bokimi, who has done some kick-ass art style. Once again, think of this guy. Think of He-Man. Think of Swords and Sandals 3's art style. Much more in line with that. Um, you've got some big, beefy gladiators are the default. You can um, make them skinnier uh, and so on, but... They will look bigger and bulkier like that, and less of the South Parky style gladiators from two. I'm going to be revealing them in the coming months once I've got something to show. I don't want to just sort of just with this whole Sword and Sandals six reveal. I don't want to just give you dribs and drabs. I want to actually have a proper, you know, tease the channel when the uh, Steam page comes out, so I can kind of wow you. Well, the whole if you had your headphones on, you'd be like, ah, stop it, stop yelling. Jesus, what's in this coffee, huh? No wonder you've got 5,000 subs with high quality like this. Joe asks, how long is the man, the, how long is the man, how long is the main campaign of Sword and Sandals 6 going to be? Longer than any previous Sword and Sandals, I would say. Because you go from town to town, fighting different arena champions, and there may be branching paths, and each town, in theory, should have a number of arena champions that you can face at your leisure. Uh, and we're talking at least, at least 15 maybe more towns. This is going to be a pretty big game. We're talking 40 plus arena champions, maybe more. It's meh, asks. By any chance, you plan to release any Sword and Sandals games to 3DS, 2DS, or DS on Nintendo? Nah, unfortunately, I don't have the tools for it. I think if, um, I think Unity could probably port back to that, but nothing I work with allows for that, unfortunately. If anyone ever wanted to make a fan version, you could get over there. I would support that. Drago Fist asks, first question, how you doing? Um, I answered this earlier, but uh, doing all right, my friend. How are you doing, more importantly? Let me know in the comments how you guys are doing. Um, it's been a rough few years for everyone. Uh, actually, a really weird few weeks for me. I've just kind of like, for the first time, struggled for motivation on Swords of Sandal 6 just because can be tough learning a new game engine in Godot and I've started to run into some limitations and issues more to do with my own lack of knowledge in it and wanting to do things a certain way but Godot wanting to do things another way um, and just a general hackiness to the to the engine which you know I'm pretty comfortable with but I'm also like ah oh, here we go again but so far so good I'm generally a little bit exhausted but I am I'm a happy man. I have a, a good family and um, good friends and good fans of the series and you guys, so I'm doing well. So thank you. Oh, uh, yeah, you had another question. Sorry. Dragon Fist also asked, what game will the models uh, represent in Sword of the Sentinel 6? Will they be the same as Crusader Redux? Or Yeah, so similar to the question from before, the um, character models will be like Sword of the Sentinel 3 mostly. Not, I'm not drawing anything for this game, though. Just be aware of that. Uh, everything has been done by proper professional artists so uh, we'll see um, stylistically most like three but done properly uh, Ferenda Dikazi no Dazaki asks will Sword and Sandal 6 continue Sword and Sandal 3 story you bet it will yeah so it's set 
a little bit of time after Sword and Sandals 5, and it um, sees the return of the automatons to the world to set up a new tournament for gladiators from all through the realm to prove their um, their strength. And this sounds like Sword and Sandals 3, but it will surprise you. Doom Guy. Rawr! <laughs> How good was Doom? What a freaking great game. I played Doom Eternal um, before my boy Charlie was born um, last year. And man, that game absolutely kicks ass. What a hell of a game. Uh, he asks, where will the Sword and Sandals 6 be set? And is the gameplay in 6 going to be the same as the one in previous Sword and Sandals? What will be different? It's set in Brandor, all through Brandor. And we're already using an enhanced version of the map from Crusader Redux. So I've actually got a map making program called Wonder Draft. I think it's Wonder Draft. I was using Incarnate and Wonder Draft, but I'm thinking I'm using Wonder Draft now, which is like the map you see in Crusader, but with lots more detail, roads and castles and place names and maps. I've done a basic version of it, but I'm going to be spending several weeks um, detailing that up in the coming months. So you'll be able to go all around, around Brandor from the deserts of Taj Brandir to the frozen north of Saul's Gateway to um, fight enemies and compete in tournaments. The gameplay will be most like Swords of Sandals 3. Uh, turn-based comment, combat with lots of spells and abilities. And there will be probably this new combat system where you can chain moves together, but I'm going to work out that. Actual gameplay programming doesn't start for at least a month too. So I'm still doing all the boring stuff. And most people get straight into the prototyping of the game, but I know how these games work. And I wanted to know more importantly to me was how does the UI work? How does the shops and everything work in Godot and everything? Because I'm making this a new game engine. I needed to know I could do it. And so I've been really mucking in and doing all the buying and selling of items, the displaying in the shops, talking to shopkeepers, equipping things, that kind of stuff. Tedious as hell, I'm not going to lie. 90% of game dev is boring. Um, it really is. Eventually you get to do fun stuff like, but that's really blown me around in terms of like motivationally. Sorry, I'll stop talking about motivation because I am actually motivated. I've just been tired. I'm sure you're all tired. You all, you know, you guys have tough jobs and everyone's studying and working and so on. So, you know, I'm with you in solidarity, but who am I to complain? Lighting man, YT says hey we're at the halfway mark half an hour mark and um gosh more questions okay got to um speed this up a little where were we where are we lighting man where are you where are you okay um lighting man asks what's the story going to be about in sword and sandal 6 and i mentioned that earlier but it's about the return of the automatons to brandor and I can't reveal any more just yet. And he also asked, how are the arena champions going to be created in Sword and Sound 6? And how will they play out? Uh, I'll create them, of course. I'll be giving them lots of random weapons and skills and armor and so on. I'll hopefully, hopefully be balancing them a little better than before. There will be more arena champions. There's going to be some fan-made champions. There's going to be hopefully some YouTubers, um, Charlie Penguins. I haven't spoken to him in a, nearly a year, so I'm hopefully he's still on board. But um, a couple of big uh, Czech and Polish YouTubers have agreed to sign on for the make characters in the game. It's been a while, though, so we're hoping they're still keen. Is multiplayer going to be in Sword and Sandal 6? Um, how's it going to work? Will it be immediately in the game or later on? Probably later on, but it'll be work most like Sword and Sandals 3 in that you'll be, you know, have a lobby. You can select gladiators from around your level, and then you both agree to fight. Go in, you go fight. One thing I need to stress is that characters you make for the multiplayer version won't work in the single player version and vice versa. Because it's just too hard for me to balance them. Because it would be a nightmare for you to be able to bring in a single player character and then beat up on multiplayer. It's just from a competitive balance, competitive balance they'll, you'll make separate characters for them. And is dungeon mode going to be in Sword and 6? Unfortunately not. No dungeon mode. I did love making that dungeon mode thing and I will be making dungeons in Constellation Mirror but not in any more Sword and Sandal 6 because it was huge to do and uh, it was really hard much harder than I thought it was going to be um, Dominican Freezer asks will magic be balanced because in Sword and Sandal 3 it was broken as hell you're right it was really broken it was um, a mess and I never set out to have these games unbalanced but so often they do just you know fall apart a little bit I'm hoping by releasing the game in early access, uh, 
fans can play it and tell me what's broken and what I can fix before the game goes into final launch. SoCal asks, what about a Redux version of Tavern Quests with an online option? Yeah, I mentioned that earlier. It would be cool to do a Redux version. I'm slowly coming around to the idea. And if I was to do it, the mini games would mostly be new mini games. Because I'm not going back and remaking those old bastard games. Some of those old games were programmed by other people in 2005 in Action Script 1, the original Flash, and oh, they're ugly. They're hard, hard, hard to, to do anything with. Stone God asks, it would be cool to see the next generation of gladiators like Son of Salonius 2, i.k.a. Grandson of Salonius. Uh, Neex Mark says, in Swords and Sandals 3, Grandson of Salonius was going to be an arena champion, but the evil ninja redux assassinated him and stole his place would great to see a great grandson of style in there so yeah let's just put him in let's just say he'll be in there uh Nix mark also asks greetings ollie i hope your coffee mug isn't empty this time it still got some in there yep that's not whiskey um it's getting cold though uh he's got some more questions let's see how many uh he's got all 10 questions so we might have to race through these um and so the, he says, the unanswered questions I'll save for another Q&A. Appreciate a big list, though. Thank you. Um, question asks, will spells in Sword and Sandals 6 have a chance to hit or miss, like in Sword and Sandals 2 and Redux, or 100% chance, 100% chance to hit, like in Sword and Sandals 3? Undecided yet. The magic system will be completely reworked. So i thinking that spells will, have, will always hit, but will have a chance to be resisted. So in Sandals, uh, question two will be the game be on consoles, not at this stage, uh, just because of reasons outlined earlier in that Godot does not support Switch and PlayStation out of the box, but you can get other people to port the games for you for a financial fee. Um, you already answered um, question three. What's the inspiration behind the original soundtrack of Sword and Sandals? What are the inspirations behind other aspects such as combat and so on the soundtrack was mostly influenced by flash gordon and music from the 80s uh like um like so queen's flash gordon soundtrack and also things like john parr's saint elmo's fire in the man in motion song i the tiger you got the touch a few other queen songs um that kind of thing even though it doesn't really sound too much like that that's what i was trying to go for with my limited musical skills um Combat items and so on, very much influenced by other role-playing games. When I set out to make Sword and Sandals, I really ideally wanted to make a game that, you know, was like my favorite role-playing games from the past, if I only had five minutes to play them. So, you know, quickly go to the shop, quickly go do combat, back to the shop. It was kind of like, you know, you see a lot of rogue lights now. This was one of those before that, I guess. Question four, will there be any more game modes than story multiplayer? No. I don't think so. Excuse me. Um, having said that, never say never. Maybe there's a boss rush, boss rush mode. Who knows? Uh, like he loved Gladiator Sprint in Redux, which was basically a boss rush, boss rush mode. Oh my god! I'm sorry. I just my language is just awful this morning. I can barely speak. Um, will we ever get an in real life tavern quest or board card game? You know, if this game, Sword of Sandals 6, does really well, it might be worth investigating doing a Kickstarter or something like that. That'd be really fun. My good friend Jeff Wicks does 3D prints. I got, he works for Hex3D. Go visit Hex3D.com. Um, he is an awesome 3D printer, and so he could do some stuff for that. That would be fun, though. Um, question 6. Do you ever read every channel on this Discord? Uh, not so much the Badlands. Like he says, hashtag Badlands. Not really a Badlands because it's just a lot of stuff that I just don't understand. I try to scan through the main discussion, the lore, the voices of Randall when I can, but it can be um, time consuming. And there's a reason I don't go in there that often, just because the time commitment. And I wish I could do more, but you know, I really have a limited time to spend. Even though I'm working on this full time now, I have a limited amount of time to spend on the game. Uh, and I need to spend as many hours as I can doing that. And I get distracted enough as it is. Question seven, if you had to pick one historic weapon to fight with and specialize in, what would you pick? Polearm, polearm, cross, bow, mace, or sword? It'd have to be a sword. Swords are awesome. I just love swords. What kind of sword? Probably a um, broadsword. That'd be kind of fun. I like broadswords. Um, question eight, or a gladius. They're kind of fun too, Roman swords. 
are you working on Sandals 6 Combat yet? Not yet. Probably about a month away. And I need to replan that. I need to do some paper, paper planning. Question nine. If you could join a Crusader faction to fight in, which would you choose? Um, Braxis. I really like Braxis. They're a democracy. They have a Senate. Uh, they're a little bit more... Um, bit more tolerant of everything than you know drakendir is very much you know the church and fator is very much the king and he chaos's you know legion of edengarth is very much nuts you know and you really don't want to fight with antares and that kind of thing um the sons of frost drink from skulls i don't know if anyone wants to be part of that you know the the iron republic is just a sour sad bunch of people that have no money and not, nothing to live for. Yeah, it'd have to be Braxis. Question t- 10 is mayonnaise an instrument? Do you want it to be an instrument? What kind of sound would it make? I guess. It's certainly a good condiment. Box is, thanks for those questions, my friend. Box Assassin asks, what's the favorite character you've created? I personally like Chaos. He lost his love. He got locked up for a year by the Roman Empire. He got angry and joined the forces with Antares. He lost the Nameless. He betrayed Antares. And it was the commander of Marksman Dantus, the fourth boss in Sword and Sandals 2, amongst many other things. He's probably the most fleshed out of all the characters. He's the one that I've worked on the longest. Um, I, he's my favorite too, I think. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Um, Wolfgang of Shackleford is, of course, loosely based on me when I was younger and, you know, was a bit of an angsty teen and then, you know, drank a little too much in my 20s and, you know, chased girls and just had a problem with focus uh i like to think hopefully wolfgang has matured like i have <laughs> um no way oh man what is this asks have you started any projects outside of sword and sandals um i have i've actually um current projects open only one other and it's called tentatively called the tower of bargle or tower of the sorcerer which is a choose your own adventure style book and i've done about uh, 25,000 words or so, 450 entries. I'd love to release that this year if I could. You know, if I get a free month and I need a break from Swords and Sandals 6, I might just sit down and write the rest of that, make it up in Godot and just launch it on Steam. You know, just a quick choose your own adventure fighting fantasy style game. Um, uh, it's a fun story. You basically have to go to the island of Bargle and um, try and rescue an artifact called the Helm of Gods. And you get to explore Bargle's Tower and Underground. And there's lots of adventures we have. It's pretty big for a Choose Your Own Adventure style book. But that's the only other project I have on the other go, on the go at right now. Nex Mark also says he may gross out some other games. You can see in the old videos of this channel. Yeah, I mean, to answer your question broadly, I've made hundreds of games in Flash and so on. Hundreds of games of, you know, various scope. The, the, the smallest being tiny little Flash games. The biggest probably being games like Yumcha Showdown um was one of the biggest gross out was pretty big i hate a gross out i wish i never made that i was forced to make that zikra mustinovan asks have you ever thought to redo the art style of sword and sandals 2 redux and fire because i felt like it's the most off from the art style you intended well i like the styling of crusader redux yeah i mean parts of it worked i mean the character art is the same but the the shopkeepers were not, and I would like to redo those again if I had. And you know, if there is going to be more DLC for Sword and Sandals 6, you know, and here's something I'm going to talk about in the future, and I'll kind of give you a little sneak peek right now. It might not even be called Sword and Sandals 6 now. It might be something like Ultimate Sword and Sandals with various DLC modules. The first included with the game being Sword and Sandals 6, then Sword and Sandals 2 Ultimate, Sword and Sandals 5 Ultimate. Maybe we'll do that, and if we do that, We'll redo all the shopkeeper art in the background and so on. Um, he also asked, we'll see, you know, when I do, when I talk these things, I always have grand plans, but I notice you get more perks, like Ultratus Amulet, Ultratus Kit in Sword and Sandals 5 on mobile than on the PC. Any reason why I did this? Literally just because uh, it was hard to make money on the mobile version, so I had to try and get some in-app purchases in there. Uh, and they're a bit game-breaking. I feel like they kind of ruined the game a little bit. So... You know, the jury's out on whether they were worth it or not. Um, the mobile version of Sword and Sandals 6 uh, will have gems to buy. They're not going to be game-breaking. They'll be, you know, in that virtual currency, but, you know, they're mainly even co- cosmetic purchases and things. I don't want them to ruin the game, but 
it's really hard to make money on mobile games without you know doing that evil evil um you know clash of clans model where just you know buy 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 lock down lock lock this lock this time lock and i don't want to do too heavily on that but just there will be a little bit of it you know still in the works but i'm not going to sell out guys i promise Question three, what are your thoughts on Gladiator Sprint for five Redux? Especially after playing it for quite a while. The only way to get it possible is the wizard. Uh, and that was proven to be frustrating. Do you plan on nerf buff, buff summoning mechanics? Probably not. That was a real afterthought. And I put it in pretty quickly. And I never really balanced it. The idea with Gladiator Sprint, it was you're only supposed to get about four or five or six rounds into it maybe. Um, because, you know, it was meant to be hard. But if I was to do a Gladiator Sprint mode for this, I'd maybe make it longer. Um SoCal says, is it going to be a morality system in 6? I don't know. It's hard to say. It sort of was important for 2 and 3. I mean, 3 and 5. I don't know how important it is to this. And if it's not relevant, then there may not be a point to it. It's meh. Again, I like that name. How many missions are there in Sword and Sandal 6? We don't know yet. A lot. Infusion asks, Sword and Sandal 6 will be the sequel of 3. Yes. Yes, it will be. You know, It'll be chronologically after five and everything, but it'll tell you what happens when the Starbound Gladiator return. Uh, and we were planning on doing a Galacticus Fantasticus tournament. We've all agreed now, haven't we, that we'll do some DLC. We'll see. Elang Sacha says, Greetings, Oli McJolly McGolly. <laughs> Greetings, Elang Sacha McCatcha. Got some questions to ask. Part one of hopefully many. Um, okay, you've got five questions. What are we on? 45 minutes. We're going to try and wrap this up in the next 15 minutes or so. So we'll have to quickly go through these. How long do you think it'll take to develop Sword and Sandals 6? Probably the biggest project you've ever done since 5. Yeah, he thinks it'll take about 2 years. Hopefully not quite that long, but we're probably looking at about another year, maybe 18 months. And I'll probably have to keep working on it and updating it and patching it if the game's going to be as big as I think it's going to be. Um, biggest inspiration for the characters. Get ready for it. He man dun 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 by the power of Grayskull. Definitely He Man, he's the biggest influence on Sword and Sandals characters and you know, there's the sort of sword and technology aspect of He Man and stuff. Um you know, and my own drawings. I've done a lot of you if you can get the classic collection, go to the art gallery and you'll see my drawing style very much influence what the characters look like. I don't draw serious characters very well, so the game couldn't be serious. Um, Sword and Sandals 5 had the characters were too serious and I didn't like that it, um, what do you think is the best way to make the community stay active other than development news and developer activities since most of the time the Sword and Sandals Discord server is quite inactive I don't know it's a tough one and I've uh, I've thought about it the Discord is very time consuming and although I set it up I very much let it the mods and the community kind of run themselves there's about a thousand plus people in there now but it's always quiet and I'd like to be able to generate discussion in there, but I just don't have the time right now. And I'm hoping that as Sword and Sandal Seats comes out, there'll be more for people to talk about, more players, more discussion, that kind of thing. Because I realize it can be hard to talk about old games. I mean, what is there still to say about Sword and Sandals too? But look, you know, in time, I hope the Discord grows because it is useful and, and, and a good part of the community, certainly bigger than the any Reddit communities and so on. I think the um, Discord and the YouTube channel is the best way I have of interacting with people. What will you do if Sword and Sandal 6 becomes a success, like on Path 2 and 3? Will you update or expand the game further? I I definitely want this to be at least as popular as those. And if it isn't, that's the last Sword and Sandals game we'll probably do, sadly. You know, we'll see. Who knows? But if it is at least as popular as those, I will support it. I'll do some DLC, like mentioned, like the Galacticus Fantasticus. Uh, a DLC for Sword and Sandals 3, maybe even a remake of 2 using this new engine. Because I know a lot of people didn't love the Redux of 2 and, you know, it has some good things and some bad things. And it's now been a good five years since that, so we're probably due for another one. Um, will you expand Whiskey Barrel Studios, hiring some more permanent members, members rather than commissioning work so we just stay as a solo? It sort of depends how much money we're making. If I can double my income, I'll definitely look to expand the studio. Uh... The only way to keep a business like this running sometimes when you're making money but not enough to be rich or anything is to act lean. Hence why my office is, you know, this little room in our house. Um, you know, I don't 
plan on becoming as big as Blizzard or anything, you know, stupid like that. I mean, is if anyway, but ideally it would be cool to have a studio and uh, have some permanent members, even if they were remote. Like I would love to hire someone like um, Bakimi and Alex Tassani as, you know, full-time musician, full-time artist, you know, if I could, and hire another programmer or a programmer to take over for me because I'm, as I mentioned earlier, I'm a bit of a crap programmer. Uh, God Romit GT asks, what is the game you're most proud of? Uh, Swords of Sandals 2 original easily. That's the biggest and the most creative and it's the one that just, just dropped, created gold. Um, how's my life? Uh, it's good, man. I've been winting in the earlier parts of this video, but I'm smiling. I'm pretty happy. Uh, it was my birthday um, on the weekend and so, you know, I spent it with my family and um, my wife took me out for dinner and uh, I feel pretty blessed, you know, honestly, you know, hashtag blessed and all that. But um, I'm getting older, you know. Um, I'm in my 40s now and I've been for a little while and that's humbling and that can be a little confronting because most of you guys are much younger than me and um, you have your whole lives ahead of you and I, I, you know, the older we get, the more we learn and the more content we are with our lives. But there's a lot to be said for the magic of youth and please uh, appreciate you know, you're young and you'll make mistakes and so on, but there is magic in being young and you have your whole lives ahead of you. So where you are right now may not be, you know, where you'll end up and you've got so much good stuff ahead of you. So please enjoy that. And I and I am a big fan of nostalgia and so much of my stout, nostalgia is for my youth spent traveling with friends and having fun and relationships I had then and, you know, just adventures. So, you know, Life is good, and I hope your life is good too, my friend. When do you expect to finish Sword and Sandal 6? 2036! No, um, sometime next year. And when will you do more Ollie Play videos, aka Games Gladiator? All right. You heard it. We're doing one next week, I promise. We will do one next week. Mateus asks, um, Have you ever played Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind? Um, yeah, yeah, I played a bit of it. That was the weirdest of the Elder Scrolls. To be honest, I didn't like it. I hated the world. It was too alien for me. And a lot of people love that weirdness of it. And it's certainly unique. But I preferred the more traditional worlds of Oblivion and Skyrim. Because the similar armor system be made for Sword of Sandal 6. Um, I don't really remember the armor system very well from it. Speaking of suggestions, what suggestions influence the game? Um, General, I forgot his name, General Nitschke or something like that has had the most suggestions which were a massive massive influence on me um i bring up my notepad here um he this guy has been a machine these are mostly his suggestions and i i've written his name somewhere but he is um yeah he's done so many awesome suggestions for the game that uh, i haven't implemented most of them yet of course but that for sword and Final six and and other members of the discord who've thrown stuff into the suggestions i read them even if I don't respond to them, I definitely read them and consider them. Sometimes there's that risk of feature creep and so on, but, you know. Oh, 52 minutes. We're going to speed up. Um, maybe instead of wearing armors, automatons could have body modifications which could make them more unique. Yes, I've thought about that. That's an awesome idea, and hopefully that can go into the game. And even having, you know, automaton, not just automaton, but body modifications for regular gladiators, like you can put a cybernetic arm on. That'd be unreal. I think that after Sun Sounds 3, there are plans on making 4 as a galactic tournament. Um, I think there was a Sun Sounds inspired game made with very similar design called Robots called Chrome Wars Arenas. I should check the look at that. Yeah, I should check it out. Um, yeah, that'd be cool. Sabine asks, will you show us your feet? You don't want to see my feet. They're, they're old man feet. And they're hobbit feet. They're hairy. But I do have feet. That is my... Toe. There you go. Sock. I do have feet. But I'll be damned if you'll ever see them. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> That's question of the day. There you go. What a great question. Um, Beansley says, Are you a fan of fighting games? Um, I don't play them much. But they're awesome. And I love looking at them and playing them. Um, problem is for me is I don't really get to spend much time playing games you know on the couch with friends anymore i my favorite fighting game of all time was tekken 5 and that was awesome i loved playing that lay Wu long and um 
the various characters there with just so cool the different fighting senses and so on uh street fighter 2 is of course a classic um i bought street of fight street fighter 4 but didn't like it as much but yeah tekken is my favorite fighting series for sure prince of caviar says i'm a big fan of your games um oh no five questions and six minutes to go how far have we got to go okay we maybe have to get through um what could you say about forbidden deaths the underdark of the world as in for uh, gotten realms underdark are there underground civilizations in the deep nether caves are uh, the deep nether caves map in sword and sounds 4 shows that were villages dragons and vampires but this is not sure if this is a canon since the players technically did not go there um yeah so maybe we could visit the underground city in sword and sandals 6 or constellation mirror yeah that is all very much uncharted area in the game right now and i want that to be a big part of sword and sandals uh constellation mirror you won't really visit there in sword and sandals 6 but there will be some kind of villages some kind of horrors down there trackless underground forests and chasms and you know it's kind of inspired by you know kind of underdark from um but also ultimate underworld as well so i want you to be able to go down there and that will pr prove it'll be a major part of constellation mirror if that ever happens what can you say about constellation mirror the game what are the plans will it be sword and sandals 7 or only sword and sandals it might not even be called sword and sandals it might just be constellation with um my business partner so if i make a game like constellation mirror maybe uh that this might be its own game set in the world of brando that's not a sword and sandals uh we'll see we've got a long way to go with that and it may well be that um you know that the game is you know inspired by sword and sandals but not because there's a lot of money at stake and things like that so we'll see i don't know it may never even happen it's one of those dream projects that you just may never get to see Law question. Can you time travel with the Constellation Mirror? Could the Sword and Sandals 5 protagonists go back 50 years to fight the Nameless? Can you control the Constellation Mirror in some way? Currently, nobody knows how to. Um, it's basically just a wormhole. Um, and of course, wormholes uh, can affect time dilation and so on. And time dilation exists in the world of Sword and Sandals, meaning that um, five years might pass in the world of Sword and Sandals, but 500 years might pass on Earth. Hence why we get characters like Hikaos, who visited the Romans and Brian May, so Brian of May, who lived in the 20th century. There you go. Um, what is the title and name of the Sword and Sandals 5 protagonist? I don't remember. Did we give him a name? Is it the Companion? The Companion is a pretty cool name. You get the title Companion to the, cha of cha to the Champions of Brandor in the good canon ending. Maybe we'll call him the Companion. That'd be cool. Um, in a conversation in Sword and Sandals 4, Hikaos said he was the final boss of Sword and Sandals 1. And Wolfgang replies that the game was released a few years ago. Do they know that they're in a video game or they drunk too much ale and talking nonsense? Um, he was playing Sword and Sandals 5 and he says, yes, we all played Sword and Sandals 3 when, when we asked him if Bargo left Brandle for a space tournament. Um, that sort of breaking the fourth wall in Tavern Quest, it's all a little bit not really canon and it's all a bit they're drunk in. They shouldn't really know that they're in a video game. Uh, officially, they don't know that they're part of a video game. Let's just say sometimes it's fun to put easter eggs like that in there though uh ahmed mala asks how many people created sword and sounds one and two are you one of them yes absolutely uh yeah i'm it was just me i did everything on sword and sounds one and sword and sounds two i did everything but my friend tony Lowe did some of the backgrounds um and then from there he did a lot of the backgrounds for other games and since then i've had musicians and composers but i am the sole programmer of every one of the sword and sounds games all the coding and game design is always just me. I've only ever hired other people. Lancelot Lumpus asks, how did you meet your wife? Well, we met back in 2013, so about seven years ago. Um, a good buddy of mine uh, was dating a girl, and I was single, and he said, hey, come out to the, the pub. I'm going to the pub to meet my girlfriend. Come along. And I went along, and... Um, Every time you go into this pub, they'd ring a bell. Bing, 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 bing. The bartenders would ring a bell and everyone would look up. It was just one of those little things they did. And as my wife says it, I entered the bar and she looked up and she said, ah, that's a guy I've got to meet. This is her words. And um, so I sat down at the table and there was a bunch of them. 
and there was this girl there and you know she was a, a pretty brunette with glasses and she was very clever and we just got talking across the table but funny enough the only reason i actually was talking to another girl uh that night and i nearly gave this other girl a business card she was just leaving and thought oh you know i'll give her my number something stopped me i hesitated for a second i said no no i don't think so this other girl left then i got talking to you know my future wife and we just got talking and got on so well and we're joking and drinking and everything we all went out dancing and she worked with my um friend's girlfriend at the time and you know a lot more happened after that but pretty quickly we um started dating after a you know, little while and then moved in together and then the rest is history and now together you know together eight years two kids house lots of travel you know life is pretty good so if you're single out there you know uh you may have many relationships in the future um never feel like you know you'll be alone forever you know i have had times in my life where i've had lots of girlfriends and time times in my life where i had none where i was just like i don't know i can't find a girl so you know you will find your one. Oh, look the hour mark but we have enough questions to finish this off properly anime jumps says who was the strongest sword and sandals character in terms of physical strength the toughest the fastest the smartest the most attractive oh lots of questions okay what did the fans say um jpeg jason says smartest is definitely bargle yeah i agree with that fastest is the evil ninja from sword and sandals too yeah probably no definitive um answers yeah, like I think physically strongest should be Platos, the big massive golem. You know, he's meant to be the strongest thing in in the realm. Um, the most attractive, <laughs> Nex Mark says, all these will say Baron Wolfgang is the most attractive because he's based on the. Nah, man, I don't, I don't think so. Like Baron Wolfgang is a bit hard living, and I, I um, I'm a bit disheveled, and you know yeah not not me although i appreciate it uh the most attractive who's the most handsome i mean in terms of the the men king lionel is a muscular dude he's about six foot four with a big you know jaw and um blonde locks and a mustache uh most attractive female depends on your perspective um i don't know you decide who's the poorest it's got to be the uh fearful prisoner um, oh, the, who's the poorest? The wealthiest nation has got to be Braxis. And the poorest nation is probably uh, the Iron Republic. Um, the people of Gallastones and so on. Who's my favorite? Um, he Chaos and the Legion. They're my, the most fun to do stuff with. JPEG Jason asks, why is Sword and Sandals 5 only 120 megs? Because I had to um, squeeze it down to fit under a certain file limit for Android. And so everything's really compressed. Um when the games were made back in the flash days everything was compressed down i mean you look at sword and sandals one it's only one megabyte and all the files are compressed down to the nth degree next says how does it feel when a game like a game series you made become a classic and a childhood game for many people um it's awesome and it's an honor and and i still can't believe it sometimes and in the wider scheme of things most people don't really know the series to be honest but there was enough people out there that I still get emails and comments and so on every day or two that people said, hey, that was part of my childhood. And, you know, if I never did anything else in my life, um, career-wise, I would be happy knowing that I had a small legacy. And to be honest, all I want to do now is make a game that lives up to those early leg legacies because I've had some failures and a lot of people didn't like the Redux series. And every new game has disappointed some people for some reason. And I want to make a game that doesn't disappoint it's hard to live up to the past and the nostalgia. And this is something Richard Garrett, who is one of my, you know, creative idols, Richard Garrett, who wrote Explore, Create, great book if you're interested in game development and adventure. You know, he's a creative Ultima. But even he struggled since Ultima, and he hasn't, to be honest, hasn't made a good game since. You just look at Shroud of the Avatar, the disaster. It can be hard living up to the shadows of the past. Mateus Grigoletto asks, will Sword and Sandal 6 have other languages? Uh, yeah, we're planning on translations. Um, firstly, Polish, and then, depending on how 
popular the game is from there we'll go uh it's a hard one to translate there's already like 200 plus strings in there um and you know it's a lot a lot going on but i want to be able to translate it because you deserve to be able to play the game in the languages that you like and i'd love to even translate into chinese to try and get into the chinese market would be awesome um dispenser 58 asks what happened to the original sword and sandals 5 um long story short it was relied on servers ran by the old company and um had a virtual currency that tied into uh, buying things on their website and so on and when that died the game died and it was impossible to retrieve and when i remade it predominantly for mobile also for desktop I didn't like the art style and there's a lot of things that didn't work. I had to change a lot just to get it running on a mobile. So that's why it's quite a different looking game. It was a really, that's, you know, I've said about different games. This was the hardest one, but that was the hardest one to make for sure. Uh, MN Friday Night Funkin' Mods says, maybe you make Sword and Sandals 2 Remastered. Um, Sokel says, there's already a Redux version. I don't think Ollie wants to drill this particular game anymore. Yeah, he's kind of right, but then you never know. That is the most popular game in the series, and um, maybe we'll do a DLC of that tournament in Swords and Sandals 6 if there is enough fan demand for it. Um, MN Friday Night Funkin' Mods also says, I'm trying to build my childhood. Happy face, sad face. Um, yeah, look, try the Redux version. It's not for everyone. Uh, you'll always have the classic, and maybe one day we'll do another version again, which would be fun to do, you know. I never really get sick of making these things. Um, 0321 says, Sword and Sandals 2 or 7. don't know how to answer that. Um, let's just say 2 because 7 doesn't exist. And finally, finally, Yellow, you have the honor of the last question of the day. It says, Xbox or PlayStation? Originally, I would have said Xbox because I had an Xbox 360 and I had an awesome controller and it was a lot of fun. But I then bought a PlayStation 4 and... That was my console of choice for a long time. I sold it last year in hopes of getting PlayStation 5, but they're all sold out. Um, yeah, Xbox had awesome series like Gears of War. Um, PlayStation has the Uncharted series, which is one of my, my favorite you know, adventure action series of all time. They kick ass. It's so good. Uh, I want to buy a PlayStation 5. A, they're expensive, and B, you can't find them anywhere. So one day, hopefully, I can get one, and hopefully, if you're a PlayStation fan, you can get one too. Wouldn't that be nice? We're back after all of that. Uh, an hour and seven or more. Yeah, a long video as they often are. I hope that was enjoyable for you. Thank you to everybody who contributed questions and comments. Thank you for your interest in the series and in the channel and my own life. And thanks for asking about me. I hope you're all doing all right. And, you know... Um, Please go to the Sword and Sandals Discord if you ever want someone to talk to. There are some really good people in there that um, it's always up for a chat. Uh, you're not alone. You can always send me emails, um, comments on YouTube and everything, and I'll uh, try to respond when I can. Work continues on Sword and Sandals 6. As always, I'll have another developer update on that soon. And we're going to do a Games Gladiator video finally next week. All right, well, it's now 11 o'clock my, in my day in the morning and I need to get stuck into actually development. Um, so I wish you all a fun farewell. Oh, hang on. Very important. You need to like and subscribe. Ah, I always get it wrong. Hit the smash, the like, all that, whatever. Um, or don't, it doesn't matter. Uh, I appreciate you sticking around. Those few who stuck around this long, you're the real MVP. And until next time, my friends, bye for now.